Okay, welcome back to this lecture series on topics from pre-calculus. In the last video, we talked about real numbers and some properties of them. In this video, we're going to talk about properties of negatives and we're going to talk about properties of fractions. So let's jump right in and start with these. There are six of them, six properties of negatives that I'd like to you uh, like you to be familiar with. The first one, it, it, really all six, quite simple, right? Um, so the first one is just if you take a negative one and you multiply it by a real number, it doesn't matter what real number, you just pick any real number. So I'm going to say A for any real number. The result is going to be the opposite of that real number, right? It's, it's kind of a no brainer. But uh, uh, when you multiply by a negative one, you change the sign. So if I gave you like a, a negative one times uh, a negative two, that gives us the opposite of negative two, which is two. Or if I said negative one times two, well, that gives us the opposite of two, which is negative two. Multiplying by negative one takes an integer and makes it into a, right, into the opposite signed integer. It, there's that balance point at zero and it just flip flops the direction of the whole real number line. The second property is kind of what we see right here, actually. It is what happens, it's the general form of, of what happens when you take the opposite, which is the same as multiplying by a negative one, when you take the opposite of a negative of any old number, A. And what we saw up in that first example is that it gets rid of the negative sign, or if that number was already negative, it makes the whole thing positive. So this is just that number A. So a couple examples here would be, well, up there, all right? We take the opposite of negative two, which is two, right? Or uh, we take the opposite of two, any number, and we get negative two, the opposite of it, okay? Um, yeah, these, these examples are quite simple, quite easy, but these properties of real numbers, right? We're not talking about rocket science here. We're just talking about uh, uh, some simple multiplication by negative one. Um, this symbol here, negative sign, it's, it's more or less equivalent to this, right? It's saying just change the sign of that thing. Just like multiplying by negative one just changes the sign of that thing. Okay, the third and the fourth properties, they get a little bit more complicated. Now we're gonna bring in two real numbers. So we already used A for the first real number we've talked about. So we'll write A and uh, we're gonna bother with another number. So let's take B for any other number. Uh, and in this third property, we're gonna take the opposite of A. We're gonna multiply it by B. So take any real number, take the opposite of it. So let's go negative two and we'll multiply it by any old number that we'll bother with, uh, 17. That's a good one. Uh, what will the result be? Well, this third property says that this is the same as the opposite of the original, or the, the, un, the unnegatived <laughs> product, A times B. Okay. So in other words, if we have a negative number times some other real number, we can sort of set the negative sign aside. We can then multiply the two numbers and then reattach the negative sign. Okay, so here in this example, we're gonna forget there's a negative sign, but we're gonna, we're gonna put it there. And then the first thing we're gonna actually do, if we're gonna forget the negative signs there, we're gonna take two times 17, which is 34. And then we're going to reattach that negative sign to it. So that's the third property. The fourth property says what you can do, which is even easier. It says what you can do if you've got two negative signs there. So any two real numbers, A and B, both of them have a negative sign on. You can just forget about it all together. That's just A times B, right? So I could take negative two 
times negative 17. And I see both negatives there. So I'm going to forget about it. I'm just going to take 2 times 17. We know that is 34. That's a nice handy cancellation property. Um, we'll move right on. Not, not too, we're not moving too slow here, I don't think. The fifth and the sixth property have to deal with a property from the previous video that was called the distributive property. And so uh, we're going to have a negative here outside of a group that has a plus sign in the middle. So we're going to take the opposite of a sum of any two real numbers, A and B, any two real numbers. We're going to take the opposite of this sum. And this property says that this is the same as adding the opposite of A plus the opposite of B. Now this is more commonly written as negative A minus B, but these are the same thing, right? So with numbers, what, what can we have here? Um, negative three plus 17. Well, that's no different than the opposite of three. So negative three plus negative 17, which is negative three minus 17, right? Right here, we see this is the opposite of 20. And, and obviously negative three minus 17 is negative 20 as well. That's 20, not 26, okay, 20. So you can either, what this property says is you can either add within the parentheses first and then take the opposite, or if it behooves you, you can distribute the negative sign and then you can do your subtraction. In certain problems, it, it works best uh, in one of those two ways, probably. And then the last one here for uh, properties of negatives is what happens if you've got a negative sign on one of those guys in, on the inside of the group, so A minus B. Well, if we look at the previous properties, what we're going to have here is a multiplication, right? So we distribute this negative sign to both of these numbers. We've got negative A, and now we've got minus a negative B. Okay, this negative being distributed is, it is like distributing a multiplication by negative one. So we're taking the opposite of the opposite of B, which is a negative A plus B. Uh, your text writes this as B minus A. Both are fine, right? So long as you commute and properly by keeping the negative sign on the A, this will be fine. Um, with numbers, this it does, might not make much sense to actually carry this out, but 20 minus 3 with a negative sign out in front, we could first do the subtraction inside, or we could otherwise distribute the negative sign. We know this is going to be negative 17, but we'll work it out anyway. Let's distribute the negative signs. So we get negative 20 minus a negative 3, which gives us negative 20 plus 3, which is, of course, negative 17. Okay, so those are the six properties of negatives we had just some, some trivial ones where just you're multiplying by a negative one. Um, we had some here where you're multiplying two real numbers, any two real numbers. One of them has a negative sign or the they both have negative signs. Um, and five and six uh, added in the distributive property with negative signs. I'd like to add a note here that you should keep in mind that if we're using variables like A and B, those numbers could be negative, right? So in this last example, I could have absolutely said A is negative three and B is 20. So this problem would have then been this, the opposite of negative three minus 20. <laughs> and this solution says, well, we're just gonna take B right over here on the right, the solution 
says we can just take B, whatever it is. So that was 20. And we're going to subtract A. But A was negative 3, so that means we get 20 plus 3, which is 23. OK. So usually these properties, um, you know, they're things you memorize. They're things you become very fluent with. And then you, you just do them. You know, you don't even think about it. You don't take the time to draw arrows and distribute. You just do them. Um, this is arithmetic. But commonly, uh, points are lost on arithmetic. Uh, you know, you miss a negative sign. You add incorrectly. You subtract in the wrong order. This is These are common mistakes. So just be careful with these properties. Next, we're going to, get in, going to get into properties of fractions. And there's six of these as well. And fractions are another area where students commonly slip up and they commonly have problems. And I think it, it comes out of a problem of being unfamiliar with fractions in general. So uh, I'm going to give examples here again, but I, you know, don't feel bad if you need to watch this or other similar movies uh, a couple times and then get a lot of uh, practice with them as well. So the first property says we're going to take any two fractions. So I'm going to use A, B, C, and D to be real numbers. And I'm going to suppose B and D are not zero. Okay, B and D are not zero. And I'm going to take A over B, so fraction, times C over D. So one fraction times another. The result is this. If you have two fractions multiplied together, you multiply the tops, you divide by the product or the multiplication of the bottoms, right? The tops in fractions are called numerators. The bottoms in fractions are called denominators. So you multiply numerators, you multiply denominators, you create a new fraction uh, using a ratio of the two. So for example, three, fifths times one half is, that's three times one, which is three, divided by five times two, which is 10. So it's three tenths. Three fifths times one half is three tenths. The next property is division of fractions. Now, in all of my pre-calculus classes, I always like to say this, uh, nobody divides fractions. No one. If somebody tells you that they divide fractions, they don't. The reason is uh, everybody multiplies fractions. So I'm going to draw like a, a little green line through two because nobody divides fractions. But if you had to divide fractions, here's how you would do it. So I'm going to take any two fractions, A over B, division sign, C over D. And what do we get here? Well, the common way of thinking about this is we're going to write this as a in a different way. This is A over B divided by C over D. Because really, fractions are just division problems. Uh, we can write it this way. In fact, this symbol here is a symbol for where to put the numbers. This number goes on top, this number goes on bottom. So this division problem is really just a fraction problem. Um, and we're gonna solve it by multiplying using a fun multiplication method, multiplying by one, because after all, multiplying by one changes nothing, right? If you take any number and you multiply it by one, you get the same number back, so. We're going to utilize this one. And we're going to use another form of one. Uh, keep in mind that for any number, if you divide by the same number, you always get one. So uh, with the exception of zero, might I add. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually multiply by D over C over D over C. Right? D divided by C is some number. And if we divide it by itself, we get one. And now we're going to apply property one. 
a fraction times a fraction. So here's fraction one, here's fraction two. A fraction times a fraction is, is done by property one. So we're gonna take on top a times d, so it's a times d, divided by b times c. Now on the bottom, we have the bottom times the bottom, which is c times d divided by c times d. Now that denominator, this bottom here, that's c times d divided by itself. So that's just one. So you probably have this other uh, piece of knowledge tucked away somewhere in there that if you divide a number by one, you get the same number back. And so I'm just gonna erase this bottom part because that's just one. So the result here of A divided by B times, excuse me, A over B divided by C divided by D, this fractional division Look what it amounts to over here. It's just multiplication. It's the multiplication of this first fraction, a, time, a over B times D over C. That's what we call the reciprocal of this second fraction, the reciprocal of the fraction. See, nobody divides fractions. Everybody multiplies fractions. Well, first they, they flip or they take the reciprocal and then they multiply. Okay. Uh, properties three and four deal with addition of fractions. So we've still got A and B. Let's say we've got, uh, let's say we've got a fraction A over C. We've got another fraction b over c. So both these fractions have the same denominator. Um, we could we could think about like uh, one half plus three halves. Um, you know, in your mind, you probably think, well, we're just taking another half and we're add adding it to one and a half. So we've got two whole things. Um, the general form here is if you have the same denominator, you can add the numerators together and take it over the same old denominator. So in my example before, one half plus three halves, they have the same denominator. So we're gonna do one plus three over two, which is four over two, which is two, okay? All right, the next property, it's this general form for what happens when you don't have the same denominator. So we're gonna do A over B plus C over D. Now this is going to be reminiscent of properties one and two there, where you know in number one you learned a basic fact, and in number two you learned how to change a problem into something that you can use the basic fact on. <laughs> right? Nobody divides fractions; everybody multiplies. So here in step four, um, you know people don't usually add fractions with different denominators. First, what they usually do is force the fractions to have the same denominator, and then they use property three. So I'm gonna again do this little, you know, line through four and say see above. And down here, we're gonna try and force, we're gonna try and force this set of fractions to have the same denominator. And the way we're gonna do that, again, is by multiplying by one in both cases. So this fraction on the left has a B in the denominator. The fraction on the right has a D. The way we're gonna multiply by one and force these denominators to be the same is we're gonna add the factor that's missing in one of them. Uh, we're just gonna, well, actually multiply the factor that's missing in one of them. So we've got a factor of D over here, but not on the left. So let's multiply by D over D. We see on the right, we're missing a factor of B. So I'm gonna multiply by B over B. Now this gives us a different fraction problem, A D over B D plus C B over B D. 
now these fractions have the same denominator. So now we know what to do because that's what this thing said. It said, if two fractions have the same denominator, you can write it as one fraction where you add the two numerators, the two tops together. Oops. AD plus CB, you just add the two numerators together and write it with just one denominator. Okay, so this property, I guess in example form would be something like this, one half plus three sevenths. They don't have the same denominator. We notice the one half has a factor of two in the denominator, but the seven has none. So let's multiply by two here on top and bottom. We notice the two doesn't have a factor of seven down there. So let's multiply by seven on top and bottom there. And this gives us seven over 14 plus six over 14. See, now they have the same denominator. So we can just add the numerators. It gives us 13. We divide by the same denominator they both had. So it's 13 fourteenths. That's property four. Properties five and six um, deal with something called cancellation and uh, proportions. Uh, so cancellation, you know, you learn this um, back in, in grade school, probably starting around the mid fifth grade maybe. And it's something that you know you work and you practice at all through high school. So I'm just going to start with a quick, uh, quick example. 24 over, let's say 36. Um, something that you commonly learned back in uh, in grade school and through high school is something called the prime factorization, where you take a number and you write it out as a product uh, of all the prime numbers that divide it. So 24 is 2 times 12. 12 is uh, two times six, six is two times three. So 24 is two times two times two times three. 36 is three, well, I'm, I'll start with two, is two times 18. 18 is two times nine, nine is three times three. Okay, now at this point, you were taught from a young age to look for common factors. So I see there's a three here and a three here that I'll cancel out. I see a two here, a two here, a two here, a two here, we'll cancel them out. The only things that are left are a two and a three. So this is a new fraction. We call this simplifying fractions of two thirds. That's the simplest form or the, the form of this fraction using the smallest integers, the integers closest to zero. The general form for this not using numbers, but using arbitrary factors. So take any two real numbers, A and C, multiply them together. Divide by any arbitrary number B times the same C, okay? Up, up here in this example, we had twos and threes, but they could be anything, right? So we'll just use C as the common factor that cancels out. Okay, so it's just A over B. Now what this is saying is you don't necessarily have to do the full prime factorization, right? You could do something like this, like mm, 51, I'll use an easy one with, with relatively large numbers, divided by one, zero, two. Well, 51 is one times 51 and 102 is two times 51, you know, instead of thinking about the prime factorization of 51, we'll just cancel it out. So we get one half, right? So this is a nice property that lets you sort of mm, skip over all of that prime factorization business. Uh, the next and last property that we're gonna talk about here with, uh, with fractions and properties of real, fractions of real numbers um, is, something called a proportion. So a proportion is actually an equality. It says two fractions are equal. Let's say A over B 
is equal to C over D. Um, if we know this is true, A divided by B equals C divided by D, then there is something else that is true. So if this is true, then we know without a doubt that B times C, that's this left denominator times this right numerator, is equal to A times D. That's this other pairing, okay, period. It's a statement. So if you have something like this, a proportion, two fractions are equal, you know that for a fact, then what you can do is this thing that's commonly termed cross multiplication. To get an equivalent statement for this setting, right? If you know this proportion is true, then you know that this product equality also holds. And this is called cross multiplication because it makes this fancy cross here, I suppose you could say in the middle. Um, it's more like X multiplication. I think it's called cross just because they're multiplying across the equal sign. Um, but that is the sixth and final property of fractions. Um, so thank you again for watching. Uh, just to quickly review, we talked about several properties of real numbers here. Again, uh, we talked about six properties of negative numbers, how you can cancel out negative signs, how you can distribute negative signs across sums and differences. And then we talked about six properties of fractions, how to handle adding fractions and multiplying fractions, how to simplify fractions through cancellation, and then how to handle fractions in a proportion where you've got an equal sign, one fraction equals the other. Um, I hope it was helpful and I'll see you again in the next one.